soul declare Good morning, church family. We're so excited you're here with us this morning. Would you stand? We're going to sing about our God this morning. the 
Our breath away. Faith so weak that we could barely pray. He heard every word, every whisper. Now those altars in the wilderness tell the story. Rescued me from that grave, Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise, nobody but Jesus, who rescued me from that grave, Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise, nobody but Him, this is our God, this is who He is, He loves us, this is our God. Thank you so much for coming to Mission City this morning. If this is your very first time joining us this morning, please, on your way out, we would love to give you a gift. If you would stop by our Connect Point right outside these doors and fill out a card, you can either drop it off in one of the offering boxes or pass it uh, to, to somebody wearing a Mission City t-shirt. We'd love to connect with you, love to talk with you. Uh, we're so thankful that you decided to join us this morning. Um, if you can't, in case you didn't know, when you walked through the doors, there were some, uh, uh, some shady individuals out there with signs welcoming everybody into the church parking lot. This is our Mission City students, right? So we call this the Mission City Takeover, all right? Thank you, thank you. So uh, my name is Greg Kasner. I'm the student leader here at Mission City. And we're so thankful to be, have the opportunity to, to do uh, the welcoming part, part of the service. Usually we have a service that's back in the back hallway. It's from 10 to 10.30, and we try to dismiss to get us in here on time. Um, and then we, we come in here. But today we wanted to be part of the welcome team. And so if you see the teenagers out there holding signs, being a little rowdy, that's awesome. We're, we're so thankful that, that, that we have an opportunity to give back and an opportunity to serve. Student ministry is going so well. We're so excited about what God's doing. In a couple weeks, we're going to have uh, December 10th, we're going to have our student Christmas party. And it's going to be held at Providence Bible Church. We're going to have pizza. We're going to have games. We're going to do the whole ugly sweater contest. Um, we're going to do all of that. We're going to have the gift exchange. So parents, help me out with that. We want to keep the gift $15 or under, right? We don't want anybody to come in there with, like, you know, a new car and then somebody have, like, a bag of Twizzlers to give, right? So $15 or under is what we're going to try to keep that limit at uh, and, and, it, and have it wrapped and ready to go, whether it's for a boy or girl, it doesn't matter. Um, and that way we're going to have a gift exchange the same night. That's December 10th at Providence Bible Church from 6 to 730 
So I, uh, I appreciate you guys letting me come in here and talk to you guys for a minute. Appreciate you all uh, letting us have the teenagers roaming around this morning. We're excited about what God's doing. This next song that's coming up, Living Hope. And I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about the importance of what that living hope is and what it means to me and what it should mean to all of us. And when I was thinking about it, I thought about 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So as you're singing this song this morning, think about that living hope and what it means to you and what it means to all of us, what it means to me. Jesus is our living hope. Without him, we don't have anything. We put all our hope, our faith, and trust in what Jesus did for us on the cross. Let's pray. <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here this morning. Uh, Lord, aside from everything going on, let us, let's stop what we're doing, stop what's going out there in the world, stop what's going on at home, at, at Thanksgiving, Turkey, and all this other stuff. Lord, let's focus just for a few, a few short minutes and hear about what you have for us. Everybody that's here is here for a reason. And before they walk out these doors, their lives can be changed. And Lord, I pray you work in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing this out this morning. Came the morning that sealed the 
His name is power, and his name is healing, and his name is life. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, 
Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Thank you that you are our living hope, Lord, that your name is power, your name is healing, and you are the way, the truth, and the life, Lord. We thank you for your sacrifice. We praise you this morning for who you are, and I pray that as we open your word, your truth will be revealed to our hearts, and that we would see you in your love, Lord. It's in your name we pray, amen. Well, good morning, Mission City. Good morning. Wow, what a morning. Worship team, thank you. What an incredible 
I'm worse. I, I can't do anything now but disappoint you after that. But anyway, I am uh, honored to be here. Uh, as you know by now, I'm not Pastor Phil, and uh, he is here, but uh, he is a friend, uh, a good brother in the Lord, one of the most exciting guys I get around. Uh, I can't drink real coffee around him. I have to drink decaf when I'm around him because <laughs> it takes me about an hour to settle down after our meetings, and, but uh, it has been a joy to get to know him and to walk with him, to hear your story and to get to walk uh, as you guys came to be, and uh, it's just just a God thing in so many ways. And I'm grateful to get to be associated with it, even in a, in a, just through that connection with, with your pastor. But uh, I'm going to ask you this morning to open your Bibles, please, to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. We're going to read there, uh, and uh, I'm going to walk us into the middle of a conversation that was going on that Jesus was having with some Pharisees. He kind of uh, was dealing with some arguments and some criticisms and, you know, those kind of things that happen. And, uh, and then he does what he does in this passage we're going to read right now. Matthew chapter 11, if you'll open your phones, your Bibles, your scroll, whatever you have with you, and let's hear God's word together. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, Because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, because this was your good pleasure. All things have been entrusted to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son desires to reveal him. Jesus Christ is God's Son. He is, he is God. People say, well, he really doesn't say that about himself. Yes, he does, right here. He says that. He is God's son. This was where he was being uh, most ruthlessly criticized by the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the day because he made himself the son of God. He did not make himself the son of God. He was the son of God. And, uh, and he says that in that statement. But then he offers this invitation. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, because I am lowly and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I want to talk to you one second, and then I want to pray for us. I do not expect you to remember everything I'm saying today. I am under no illusion that you're going to. I I don't expect people to remember the outlines that I give them until Wednesday. They won't. You won't. Um, Phil may be a much better preacher than I am, and maybe you remember his, but you won't remember mine. I want you to remember one thing. And that one thing may be something I say in this message. But most likely, the thing that you remember will not be something I say. But the, the, but the specific message the Holy Spirit has for you this morning. It may bounce off of something I say. Most likely it will bounce off of something in Scripture. God has a word for you this morning. If you'll open your heart and you'll listen. He has a word for you this morning. You may expect that. You may not be expecting it. But he has a word for every one of you. But you have to have ears to hear and a heart that's open to listen. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in this moment, I pray that you will make every heart ready, every ear, every mind receptive to your truth, to your word, to the name of Jesus. I pray for those who may really not know exactly what's going on here today. Maybe they've come as a guest or they don't know exactly what uh, church is about and doing this to be with a friend or whatever the situation may be. But speak to their hearts this morning. May they hear your specific invitation to come to you today. For we ask it in Jesus' name. 
In my home church, I used to say, all God's people said amen, so let me do that. And all God's people said amen, amen. amen. All right. This is an exclusive message. It's not for everybody. Um, but, but let me ask you a question. How many of you today are tired? You're weary, all right? You're, you're burdened. You're burnt out. Rusted out. Uh, it's for you. This is a message for the tired people. In fact, let me say something to you, and this is from the Lord. All right, I'm going to just tell you this. This is from my heart to you, and I believe the Lord is impressing me to even say this. Some of you just need to close your eyes this morning and take a nap. Right now, that's fine. Don't wake them up if they go to sleep. It's okay. Sometimes the thing we need more than anything else, this most spiritual thing you can do is take a nap. I'm a marriage counselor. I can save a lot of marriages if you would do one thing. When you get in a conflict with your spouse, one of you just needs to look at the other one and say, do you need a nap? <laughs> you know, sometimes babies just need, you know, we cry, we get whiny, we get irritable, and what do you do? You feed them, you change them, and you put them to bed, right? Well, some of us just need to be put to bed. You just need to take a nap. You'll wake up in a better mood. You know, and, and that's okay. And next time you, you, know, you guys get in a conflict, use that. That's a freebie, and you can, uh, you can apply that and maybe save your marriage in the process. Take a nap. Sometimes that's okay. Jesus looked at the crowd and saw weary people. Man, they were just worn out. They were so tired. Life was hard. Matthew chapter 9 says that Jesus looked at people like sheep without a shepherd. You know, sheep without a shepherd don't know their, their right hoof from their left. They were totally helpless. And Jesus had compassion on them. He felt, he felt their despair and their hopelessness deep in the pit of his stomach. He looked at them, and it was like a kick in the gut. You know, the Bible tells us we don't have a high priest that can't be touched with what we feel. He was made just like you and me, except he had no sin. He knows exactly what you're feeling this morning. He knows just what you're going through. And maybe, in, in, you know, this, the, the part about compassion happened in chapter 9. Maybe some of those same folks were still hanging around in chapter 11 we just read about. And he looked at those weary people, those helpless, harassed people. And he said, come to me. You're tired. You're weary. You're worn out. You're burnt out. Burn out on church, baby. Maybe you've worked yourself into burnout. You've just tried so hard. And you're burning so many candles right now. So Jesus said this. He offered three invitations. Number one, he said, follow me. Follow me. Come to me, he said. He didn't say, hey, come join the church. He didn't say, learn to practice mindfulness. He offered them a relationship. He offered himself. It was a simple invitation. Follow me. You know, following gets a bad reputation today. How many of you would say, you know, I'm a really good follower? I mean, how many would say, if somebody would say that about you, you know what, they're a really, really good follower. Uh, you know, nobody wants your kid to come home from school with a note from the teacher that says, Sarah is a really great follower. You'd be calling that teacher the next day and say, hey, we need a meeting. Well, you mean my kid's a follower? We don't equate success with following. We want our kids to be leaders. Hey, we want to be leaders. Graduate degrees are offered in, in schools on, on leadership excellence. We want to be excellent leaders. I have never seen a class offered, and I've taught in, in colleges and seminaries, and I've never seen a class on learning how to follow one-on-one. -on -one. And if you saw it, you wouldn't take it, would you? <laughs> Following 
And we see followers as, well, sheep, you know. They're lemmings. They're mindless zombies. They're not ambitious. They're, they're robots. Well, I guess robots are smarter than us now, but you catch my drift. You know what I'm saying? In our culture, we have elevated leadership to a place of idolatry. We worship leadership. Jesus said, no, 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 no. I want you to follow me. Nobody wants to excel at following, but if we're all leaders, what's going to happen? You know, everybody up here on this platform a moment ago leading in, in worship, if they were all leaders, you would not have heard good music this morning. Somebody up here had to say, I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow. Jesus did not die on the cross, folks, to build a kingdom of entrepreneurs and leaders. The church isn't a startup business. He called followers. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Let the dead bury the dead. You follow me. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He even told Peter, the leader of the disciples, a leader. He said, Peter, follow me. New Testament letters talk about Jesus as our example, as our model. And we are to follow in his steps. That's your job. Get good at following. Learn to follow. Do you follow? Are you following Jesus? You know, say, I'm a Christ follower. What does that mean? Do you really? What are you following him for? Do you think he's going to make you a great leader? Or is following the goal, the end game? I just want, man, I just want to be a follower of Jesus. I don't follow the wrong crowd. There's young people in here. You know better than that. You follow Jesus. You follow Jesus. So the first invitation he gave them was follow me. The second one was this. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke. You know, the... Take my yoke. We, we're, we aren't a farming community anymore, most of us. But even if you're not, you know what a yoke is, right? It's a, it's a big piece of wood with two holes that you would hold two animals together so they could plow in a garden. My first church was in the country. It was rural farmland and horses and cows. We, we caught our water in cisterns. I didn't know what a cistern was. I thought that was the feminine form of brethren, you know? You had brethren and you had cistern, you know, that just... I thought, a, I thought a bush hog was a pig that ate shrubbery. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a farm guy. I'm not a, I'm, not a, I'm not a rural guy. I'm not a country boy. But, but the area that Jesus grew up in the first 30 years of his life was in a village that was very much agricultural, depended on farming, it depended on plowing and ground and having cattle and having animals ready to work in that way. In fact, there's a tradition, Alistair Beck shares, there's a tradition that, that says that Joseph, Jesus' earthly father, Joseph the carpenter, specialized in making yokes. And they said he even had a sign outside his shop that said, our yoke is easy. I don't know, that's a tradition. I don't know that that's true or not. But an easy yoke was a yoke that fit the animal wearing. And if you're a compassionate farmer, you want the yoke that your animal is wearing to fit because otherwise it shapes its neck and makes it uncomfortable and it doesn't want to work. It's not cooperative. So you want a yoke that was easy. It meant it's painless. It fit them well. And there's a couple of things here. You know, Jesus was an apprentice carpenter to his father, Joseph. He grew up watching his dad. If your dad did woodwork when you were growing up, you always wanted to be in the shop with him, didn't you? Seeing what he was doing. You know, he wants to, where's this noise coming from? What's this hammering and sawing and all these things and, you know, sawdust flying? I, I want to be around that. That's, that's really cool stuff. He grew up watching Joseph work with wood. His dad taught him the first time he ever hit a hammer and a nail together. His dad showed him how to do it, not hit his thumb. He watched his dad saw a piece of wood, make it fit in a piece of furniture, sand it down. 
He understood, Jesus understood being an apprentice to an experienced tradesman. And, and this is what, listen, you know what a disciple is, guys? A disciple is an apprentice. Jesus said, come to me, apprentice with me. Now, he's not going to teach you how to work with wood. He's going to teach you how to work with people's souls. Come to me, apprentice with me. Jesus learned carpentry, but he also learned how to deal with people, I think, in some ways, the way his dad did. And you know what else he did? He practiced. I took piano lessons when I was younger. Some of you all did too. They didn't take with me, but I took them. Uh, and, and I, my, the problem was, you know, I mean, you can't, you can't learn how to play. You can do a few things with a YouTube video on piano, but at some point you actually have to touch the keys, don't you? At some point you have to learn to train your hands to do the things that a pianist can do on a keyboard. Jesus said, listen, come apprentice with me, but you're going to practice what I'm teaching you. You're going to learn how to do the things that I'm doing. In John chapter 5, Jesus himself said, I'm a follower. Wait, 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 that's Jesus. We're following him. He's, what, no. He said, I'm a follower. Here's what he said in John chapter 5, verse 19. Jesus said, truly, I tell you, the son is not able to do anything on his own, but only what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, the son likewise does these things. Look at that. I don't do anything on my own. I only do what I see. Look at this. 30 years, Jesus learned how to be an apprentice, and then when he stepped into his ministry, he looked at his father and learned how to do this. His father said, do this. And that's what he did. And here's the neat thing. He's offering you the same opportunity. Hey, Follow me. Take my yoke on you. He only expects us to do and say what he does. How many times does your mouth, your text message, or your decision get way out in front of Jesus? Oh, I'm a Christ follower. Really? It didn't sound like you were one a moment ago. That text message I got last night, it didn't look like a Christ follower. You're saying Jesus said that before you wrote it? Are you following Jesus? You know that even the yoke that two animals would be paired in was a type of an apprenticeship. A more experienced animal was always placed in the yoke with a less experienced one, a younger animal. The older one taught the younger one. They were in the yoke together. So even the animals were apprenticing together. That's what the yoke meant. The relationship of a rabbi to his students was called the yoke. The yoke of the rabbi was the particular interpretation and slant that he would have on the law of God. So you joined his school, you became an apprentice to a rabbi, and this is how they would invite you to join the school. Take my yoke upon you. That's what they would tell him. And then I'm going to teach you how I observe the laws of God. You know, the crazy things that you heard that Jews were expected not to do on Sabbath day, you know, you can't, can't offer yourself medical attention if, you're, if it's on the Sabbath or you'd be working, you can't heal somebody, you can't offer them medical help, you, you can only walk a certain amount of steps from your home. You know, you can't even eat a, an egg laid by a chicken on the Sabbath day. Well, you know what? You can take your Bible, there's no place in the Bible that any of those things are talked about. But the rabbi's yoke taught those things. Well, rabbi so-and-so said, this is what you're supposed to do to really observe the Sabbath day. They had books called the Mishnah that had a bunch of other rules. And Jesus kept violating their rules. Not the word of God. But these rules were burdensome. You can't You can't make bread on the Sabbath day. That's what the disciples were doing. They were walking through the field and they were eating grain. He said, your your disciples are harvesting on the Sabbath day. Jesus, you can't do that. They're hungry. Feed them. I'm going to feed them. 
But it's the Sabbath. I don't care. I'm going to feed. Man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. Jesus corrected their teaching. But rules, they, well, they happen in churches too. You know, even, even you know, Jesus just co- continually broke their traditions and rules. Some, I saw some preacher online a couple weeks ago. He was losing his mind over people in his church that drank coffee out of the Starbucks cup. Losing his mind. And he basically said, if you don't get rid of that cup, just get out of here. I don't want you in here. So, so preacher, let me just ask you a question. So it's okay if this lost person who came into your church drinking Starbucks, you're going to send them away because of their Starbucks cup. They may go to hell because they didn't stay and hear the message of the gospel. Because they were drinking the wrong cup. That preacher had a yoke that he had imposed on people. Not the word of God. This is what the people were dealing with, that kind of stuff. So in Jesus, in, in Matthew uh, 23, verse 4, Jesus called them out for this. He said, they tie up heavy loads on people's shoulders and then don't lift a finger to help you with them. That was religion in Jesus' day. Rules and rules and more rules, oughts and can'ts and don'ts, filled all their thoughts with God. Well, I can't do this and I shouldn't do that and I ought to do this. And, and so they were living in that kind of mess. And then Jesus calls out and he says, come to me. Come to me and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy. My burden is light. And the people flock to Jesus because like people today, they were weary of life and tired of religion that never removed their guilt and the weight of their sin and left them wrestling at night with their stress and hopelessness and fear and Financial problems and family issues and addictions. Religion offered nothing to relieve that. No religious system does. I don't care what your religion is. It does not help you. It will not fix those problems. It will not give you rest. It just becomes one more load that you have to carry. So Jesus invited them and he invites us into an easy yoke with him. Take my yoke upon you, walk with me, walk in my mission, follow me, do what I'm doing is I'm bringing the kingdom of God into the world. Walk with me, work with me, and I promise you, not a problem-free life, but one with rest. No more burdens, no more stress, not more stress, no more more fear. I want to give you rest. That's the last point. I'll give you rest. If the person next to you right now is asleep, kind of gently nudge them and start waking them up. I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. I am blown away by the posts and the ads that I see online designed to promote a new product to help you sleep. Some of you may be taking something to help you sleep or a new method or a diet that will help you go to bed and rest better. There's an epidemic of weariness. We're all tired. We're tired. You know, they, they tell us lately there's, that UFOs are real. And we just go, I don't know, I'm too tired to deal with it. You know, I, I mean, nothing, nothing, you know, nothing helps that weariness. So, so some of it, let's be honest, some of it is happening because we have yoked ourselves to the wrong thing. Maybe you yoked yourself to a relationship that you shouldn't be in, and it's wearing you out. Maybe you're trying to keep an online relationship alive, but you're married. And it's wearing you out. You know it is. You did it because it kind of brought you rest at first, but now it doesn't. Now it's just a burden to carry, a load you have to deal with. Maybe you've yoked yourself to a substance abuse habit or some merciless job that never lets up or You've yoked yourself to a debt that's sinking you like an anchor. We take these yokes on ourselves thinking they're going to be the answer to all of our problems, but they just become ill-fitting and miserable loads that are painful and that make life just so hard. Jesus said, come to me. I want to give you rest. I want to take you out of those yokes. I want want you to come into my yoke. Give me your yoke. 
Here's his last invitation. Give me your yoke. Give me your burden, your load, your cares. Give me all of your failed attempts to please God with religious work and promising to be good. Give me all your guilt and all the things that you failed in, all your sin, all your despair, and take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lonely and lowly in heart. Gene Peterson in the message translates these verses this way. Are you tired? Worn out, burned out on religion. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. How about that? Wow. I'll give you rest. How is that not the best thing we could ever hear? You know, you're tired of this ill-fitting yoke you've made for yourself, thinking it held the answers. Come to me. Rest in me. He died and he gave everything to purchase you. Now, let me, let me speak to someone here today. I, I had a, a, a man that came to me a number of years ago. I counseled with him a number of times through a broken marriage and addictions and, and finally got to the place that he was ready to say, I'm ready to follow Jesus. But in our last conversation, the last one I ever had with him, He said, Pastor, I need to ask you a question. Do I have to believe that Jesus is the only way of salvation to follow Jesus? I said, well, friend, Jesus said he was. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. And if he's wrong about that, maybe he's wrong about all the other stuff too. So yeah, I, I think you do need to believe that. He walked out. Listen, the yoke, I, I, I don't know farming stuff, told you again. But here's what I know. A yoke has two holes in it. Jesus is inviting you into an exclusive relationship with him. You can't yoke a bunch of other religious views and systems and ideologies behind you. It doesn't work. You yoke yourself to Jesus and him alone. And that's where the rest comes. How do I know I'm doing the right thing? You feel rest. You feel a load. I talk to so many people who come to Christ. They go, it's just like a load lifted. Yeah. You got into the right yoke. And now the load's gone. Not all your problems are solved at the moment, but all of a sudden now you got energy. Like hanging out with Phil, you know, just boy, you know, just get all this energy back. Couldn't be easy. Jesus died and he gave everything on the cross to purchase you. He loved you that much. I I can't get that. I, I'll be honest, I don't love you that much. But Jesus loves you that much. He died for you. And it can't be easier. You know, we used to sing an old hymn that said, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Today we're going we're to sing for just a moment and the team comes back up and as we do, maybe in your heart, you need to make a decision today. You need to say, I, I'm tired of this yoke. I'm, care. I'm worn out. I'm weary. I'm done. All right, you're in the right place today because Jesus is here. And he said, come to my yoke. Join me. Walk with me. Let me make your life restful, a real rest.
Let me show you how to recover your life. Will you come to him today? Father, take these words, I pray. Set them on fire by your spirit. And may they burn their way into our hearts this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Would you stand as we sing this last song?
announcements before we close out. Uh, first off, are you not so thankful for that Jesus paid it all for you and I to enter into a relationship with him? Come on. And also, please, to my mentor and close friend, give a shout out to Pastor Tim for coming and giving the word for us today. Thank you so much. I don't know if that relates to anything that you're going through, but I can tell you it does for me and for my family and just learning how to come to Jesus to really take his yoke and just learn that he is humble and lowly in heart and we will receive rest when we're walking with him. Amen. Now, if any of you guys are, maybe you're contemplating faith and maybe you're thinking, you know, I want to find out more about what it means to follow Jesus. And on our connect card, uh, you can do that. You can check that off and you can drop it in the offering box. We'll have someone follow up with you. And not only that, maybe some of you guys are just going through some things you really want the church to be praying for. Um, we've added with these new cards at the back side of it, there's a prayer section in there. And you can just, if you want to leave it anonymous, you could just fill out the prayer and drop it in there. If you want us to know uh, who you are, you can fill it out and drop it in there as well. We love to do that because we have a prayer ministry. We'd love to be able to pray for you and for your family or whatever it is that you're going through. We'd love to be able to do that. Also, this is an opportunity for us to give back to God. So you can give online and you'll see that on the screen or you can give safely and securely in the back as well. And then uh, next Sunday, just so y'all know, for specifically for you guys who have kids, next Sunday is going to be family uh, worship Sunday. So what that means is there's going to be no kids men. Everybody is going to be in here. It's going to be a great time. It really is. We think it's very important in family discipleship for kids to come in here and see their parents and see other adults attentive, worshiping. But we're also cognizant that it can be a lot. So we're, we're not unaware of that. So we'll have games and snacks for you and for your kids. Uh, and we also try trim the service back to about 50 minutes just to be aware of the little ones in here because I got some little ones in here and let me tell you my little one Luca he ain't playing around all right I mean so y'all don't be judging me if you see him you know running around the auditorium okay and one of us got to take him out so anyway yeah that's that's always uh, it's fun because Aaron's like who are we doing this for <laughs> so Aaron's my wife by the way if you don't know who Aaron is uh, but also uh, we have in a women's event that's coming up too and um, I tell you this because if you want to know more information about things, just follow us on social media or go on our website. You can get more information about the events and things that are coming up. And then our last service of the year is going to be uh, uh, December 23rd at 4 p.m. We're going to have invite cards. Invite as many of your friends and family to come to that weekend, uh, that service. And then the following Sunday, we take off uh, just as a respite for you guys to just go enjoy family time, enjoy travel. Uh, man, go do whatever you guys want to do, and we'll be back in the new year, January 7th. Let me pray, and then uh, and we'll get out of here. There's invite cards. I always say this every Sunday. There's invite cards. Take a little bit of those invite cards. Invite your friends, your neighbors, a waiter or waitress. Church, it's so important that we live on mission. I really mean that. And living on mission, one of the ways that we do that is taking a simple invite card. You never know the power of an invite whenever you just say, you know what, I'm gonna leave this with someone and I'm gonna just trust that God might work through the power of that. You never ever know. Watch and see how God will use you when you just take a step of faith, all right? Let me pray and then we'll be done. Father, I pray blessing over every single person in this room and even those that are watching online. Father, I pray that you would meet them where they are. If there's forgiveness that needs to happen in their hearts, I pray that that would happen. Father, if there's financial needs and struggles that they're going through, I pray that you'd bless them and you'd help them. Father, I pray that there would be an incredible peace and love in their home, that they would sense it in such a palpable way that they would know from today that you answered this prayer and you're right there with them. So let us come to you 
who's the one who gives us soul rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, we love you guys, and we will see you all next Sunday. Jesus blood in righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Let's sing that again. My hope is built. blood in righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest rain but holy trust in Jesus name